Today we're talking about Walmart, but more importantly, why people decided to quit their jobs. Obi, Juan Kenobi, please hold me, don't show me, Obi. What's up everyone, welcome to Company Reviews. In this video, we focus on what people hated most about working for the company Walmart. For a more thorough investigation of the company, I would encourage you to check out my video called Working at Walmart, a Company Review. So as always, when considering the reasons that people like, hate, or tolerate a company, you have to refer to the five categories. These five categories being pay and benefits, work-life balance, management, job security and advancement, and culture. When it comes to the reasons people hate or decide to quit a company, the evidence usually lies within the lowest rated categories. These categories at Walmart being job security and advancement, culture, and management. Starting with the lowest rated category, management, let's just rip this band-aid off and say it, most of your managers at Walmart are uneducated. It's kind of stupid, still does a pretty good job, eh? Yeah. No, not necessarily dumb, but not properly trained for the role, with the exception of your store manager and some of the higher up positions like co-managers in most stores. The problem lies with your frontline managers and department managers. Without proper training in different personality types, effective ways of communicating, and general leadership training, you're left with a manager that just follows their company required computer-based learning on how to be a manager. And this leads to managers who only really learn the handbook and how to follow company procedures. So instead of a genuine leader, you're left with an enforcer of the rules. This makes it feels like you're working more for a prison guard. Some managers actually take pride in their vast knowledge of the company's rule book. They think the better they know the rules, the better the manager they are. The problem is nobody likes an enforcer. These managers are just looking for reasons to manage people. Instead of showing ways to appreciate your team, they're more likely to remind you that you forgot your name tag or that you're just one tardy away from a write-up. So instead of a team who feels motivated and is excited to show up for their shit, you get a team that is dreading the thought of showing up to work because they're anxious about what thing they're doing wrong that the manager is going to point out this time. What this creates is an us versus them environment where the hourly associates don't feel appreciated or that their management team has their back. And you can hardly look to the managers or co-managers to address your concerns either. It's no secret that the frontline managers like coaches, team leads, and department managers at Walmart aren't paid well. They are very hard positions to fill. It's a lot of work and very stressful. Not many people think the pay is worth it. It would be much easier for them to just replace an hourly associate that doesn't like their manager than it is to find another person who wants to fill the manager role. It's much more responsibility without much more pay. And when you have an army of untrained managers that aren't making enough money for them to feel like the job is even worth it, the effects pour into the remaining categories. To be fair, job security and advancement and culture didn't rank significantly lower than the highest rated categories. They were rated at 3.2 while their highest rated category was 3.3. Not a huge difference. But all this really tells me is that there isn't anything that people get really excited about at Walmart. All the categories are closely related because none of them really stand out as being special. To give you an example of what I'm talking about, take a look at the ratings for an upcoming review of mine, Costco. At Costco, people love the pay they receive, so much so that they rate at 4.3 out of 5 stars. And as you can see, there is quite a bit of difference from the rating they gave pay versus their lowest rated category, management, which is at 3.6. It's almost a whole star rating more. That's because they think their pay is good while they think the management is pretty average. You don't see a huge difference between the categories at Walmart because people feel that everything at Walmart is just okay. But even though there isn't a huge difference in the rating, there is a reason that they scored less than the other categories, starting with job security and advancement. You will hear me say this a lot in my retail store reviews because it holds true across the board. Retail is not a destination job. Kids don't grow up saying, I'd like to manage a Walmart one day. Being that this is not a destination job, the vast majority of people that get hired onto Walmart do not see themselves staying with the company long term. There are advancement opportunities at Walmart, but most people working there don't really care. This, combined with the fact that Walmart will pretty much hire anyone, makes turnover at this company huge, which is another factor that contributes to job security and advancement. When people see other people leaving the company so often, weekly even, it doesn't instill confidence in their future with the company. There also seems to be a large number of people who are disgruntled with the attendance point system at Walmart. 
Many people feel as though the point system for attendance at Walmart is very impersonal. If you're late or you miss a day for any reason, then you start racking up points. In most cases, the reason you needed to miss work doesn't even matter. These points can be used not only to trigger automatic write-ups and termination, but also used in your performance evaluations and hurt pay raises. Ultimately, it just makes people feel like the company and the managers treat them like a number. Now let's talk about the culture at Walmart. Plain and simple, when you feel like you don't have a future with the company and your managers are policy hounds, you hate showing up for work. Plus, who in their right mind wants to argue with a customer who's trying to use expired coupons and acting like it's your fault something isn't in stock? Anyone in retail knows one of the worst parts of the job are the customers, and Walmart is famous for theirs, but not in a good way. This is not a job that many people enjoy, and if you don't enjoy what you're doing, and if your managers kind of suck, and you feel like you're treated like a number, it makes for a very long day of you wishing you were anywhere else. So, just to recap for those thinking about a job at Walmart, the things people hated most about working for the company are mainly management, but they also feel like they don't have much of a future with the company and don't care much for the atmosphere either. But that's enough for me. Now let's go to the real people who have lived it. These are some of my favorite one-star reviews of Walmart. From a team lead, former employee out of Sartell, Minnesota, goes through employees like toilet paper, treats them like the stuff you use toilet paper on. Horrible management. I mean, seriously, the worst I've ever seen. Worse than Halloween stores. Managers will bully you, and then you get treated bad for sticking up for yourself. Save yourself the hassle. Pros, hour lunch, pay, I guess. Cons, none. Sounds like you had some cons there. Okay, from an overnight stock associate, former employee out of Austin, Texas, torturous environment run by inept, petulant management. Petulant. All right. So the overnight stocking crew of 1253 is filled mostly with people unable or unwilling to learn how to do the job properly, while the overnight management is split between an ineffective blowhard and a tyrannical, micromanaging, borderline sociopath that rides around on a floor cleaner because she's too lazy to walk. I would actually, <laughs> I would actually enjoy seeing that. Um, the few quality people who operate within this job do 90% of the work, and most of them either break down physically or eventually stop caring and do what everyone else does. Only work for this company if you don't care about yourself. Fair enough. Good review, by the way. Customer service. Uh, oh, this is from a customer service former employee out of Paragold, Arizona. Another brick in the wall. All in all, it's just, uh, you get it, yeah. Basically, they milk you until they don't need you anymore. Then they screw you over. It's almost impossible to move up or even get out on full time. Get out on full time? Or even get out on full time. Yeah, okay. And then they treat you terribly. Pros. My shoulders make fun popping sounds every day due to pushing cars. Doesn't sound fun. Cons. Everything. <laughs> okay, this is kind of a long one. This is from an overnight stalker. Former employee at a Cornelius, Oregon. I think it, O-R is Oregon, right? Uh, Alexa, what is the abbreviation for Oregon? Oregon's abbreviation is O-R. Nailed it. Okay, overall, it was awful, and the pay is competitive only to keep a high-flow new hire. Oh, only to keep a high-flow new hires. Okay, yeah, I get what you're saying there. They only pay well to keep new hires coming on. So anyway, management was unwilling to listen to worker feedback. Rude. Didn't teach people how to do what they were told to do. Overworked many people and expected a very unreasonable pace. They denied paid time off for people to get surgery. Okay. Many people at the location I worked at uh, would be scheduled for 39.5 hours a week, so they weren't eligible for benefits, and salary workers would get very overworked on a regular basis, 50 plus hours a week. They didn't pay me anything until 11 months after I quit working there, despite regularly reaching out to them about this. I, it was awful, and I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. Do not let the pay tempt you. 
Okay, that does sound like an overall horrible experience. Let's break this down a little bit. I was not aware that they could push you to work 39.5 hours and not keep you uh, and not make you full-time, I guess is what I'm just trying to say there. Um, yeah, that doesn't surprise me with the uh, overworked people that are salaried workers. That's very common in the workplace. Salaried workers only making, uh, or not only, but salaried workers being you know forced to work 50 plus hours a week. Uh, because they don't have to pay them overtime. But anyway, let's let's move on here. Pros, one hour lunch breaks, cons, terrible management, low morale, expected overtime, unreasonable pace, and a company that will take advantage of you if able. From an overnight stalker, current employee out of Alabama. Just be lazy. They love people who are lazy. All right. The harder you work, the more likely they will take away from those who are lazy and give to you. If you don't like it, they don't care. If you speak your mind about it, they don't care. Here's more work for you. They took all bonuses away from associates and gave it to a group of younger individuals, team leads, and told them they don't have to lift one finger. If you like working to earn lazy people their paychecks too, this is that place. Right on. Okay, an e-commerce associate, former employee out of Northport, Florida. It destroys your soul. In store, you are treated very poorly, universally. If you have not been there for 20 plus years, your experience or opinion does not matter. 10 out of 10, do not recommend. Pros, there are zero pros. Cons, all of it. From an associate and former employee at a Monet, is that Monet or Monette? Monet. And we're just going to say Monet, Missouri. Don't ever work for these succubus giants. If they truly cared for the employees and the rest of society, this business would become a nonprofit. That's an interesting take on it. How many times have I seen the mom and pop stores die and wither because of this company? Too many. And that is true. Walmart does run mom and pop stores out. Pros. None. Non. Cons. Every facet of being. Every single one of them. Oh boy. Here's another one. From a self-checkout host slash cashier, former employee at a Lancaster, Pennsylvania, hellish, soul-crushing, absorbs every atom of your life. Really is as horrible as people say it is. I love working with the people. I thrive at communication and helping people feel calm. I was the person who diffused situations with angry customers because I was very good at it. But the company itself and management slash corporate in particular are just horrific. This company will consume every part of your life and a huge part of that is due to the completely unreliable random schedules, stressful, unrewarding work environment, and purposeful understaffing. I left shortly before COVID, but I wouldn't touch one of those places with a 50-foot pole now. They didn't care about our health at the start and I doubt they do now. Pros, very easy to get the job. They will accept anyone with a pulse. That is true. Cons, underpaid, high stress, horrible management, frequently encouraged slash forced to break company rules, no regular hours or schedules. So pretty much everything. We interrupt this program to bring you a funny meme. Walmart's Employee of the Month. We will now return you to your regularly scheduled program. So there you have it. These are the reasons that most people hated their jobs at Walmart. Please keep in mind that everything I said in this review was based on my personal opinions. I will always encourage you to do your own research and come to your own conclusions. If you have worked for this company, please let me know how I did in the comments. Were my observations close or way off? Also, feel free to leave your own review of the company in the comment section as well. I love hearing your stories, both good and bad. You made this. And made this. You know, awesome. I ride a hippopotamus. I ride a hippopotamus. You can ride my hippopotamus. You can ride my hippopotamus. I ride a hippopotamus. I ride a hippopotamus. You can ride my hippopotamus. You can ride my.